My teaching video with Bangladesh uh, had internet problems this morning. The recording, the audio recording was terrible and the video recording wasn't working well. And so I'll just have to repeat it here without the benefit of, of actually talking to the people there. But this morning I'm in Matthew 8 verses 14 to 17, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law as well as many other people. Here's the text itself. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. So, the point of this text is, the, is to report on the battle between Christ and Satan and to endorse Jesus' authority over any and every confrontation with disease and nature or Satan. We see that Jesus' touch has power just as his words have power. It's not just authority, but actual spiritual and physical power in his words and in his touch. This raising of Peter's mother-in-law shows his compassion and care over his people. And actually his raising her up foreshadows his own resurrection. He has authority to raise up. He has authority over the natural world he has authority over the spiritual world. And this display and of his authority and power are like a growing tree as the gospel progresses. Uh, the more he's there, the more we see. And the more we see, the more fruit that is born. Um, that's, now, we're also finding that some people see him for who he is. And some just want to use him to get what they want. We'll talk about that a little later. These people aren't necessarily wanting to be disciples or that they're righteous people. But the lines are becoming more clear. The forces of destruction versus the forces of life. The for forces of, of disease and the forces of health. And that pertains to both the natural world and the spiritual world. You know, his purpose is not to heal as many people as possible, but rather to confront people with a demand for a decision about God's claims on them. It's really about spiritual things and about salvation. Healing is a mechanism, but it's also a, a picture. So this woman is sick with a fever, and a fever usually indicates that there's a problem, that the fever the body tries to deal with it with a fever. There's an underlying problem. And that again has some import into what this is really about. Now remember also that in that day, some teachers would avoid women because they weren't men. So, but this is not the way of Jesus. Jesus heals her. He touches her hand, nothing else. The healing is immediate and complete. She doesn't even need time to regain her strength. It says she got up and began to work and to wait on him. She is perfectly healthy instantly. And we're meant to see that his authority and his power are complete. But then Matthew expands the field, showing us how large this tree is getting. Many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he cast out the demons and he healed all the sick. Notice, just for, just for fun, that they did not see sickness and demon possession as the same thing. They make a distinction between those who were possessed with demons and those who were sick. But what we see is that these people flocked to him because he could do things. There are lots of people who teach. There are lots of people who make lots of claims. But who else can heal in an instant? So I have it in, in my mind this picture of the relentless power of evil. It, it knows no reason. It knows no sense. Uh, and it knows no limit. There seems, seems to be there's no boundary 
to the power of evil. It never stops. It never stops trying because it's evil. It never backs down. It never rests. It never goes away because it seems sometimes that there's no power that can stand against evil. If it were yin and yang, there would be this truly endless back and forth battle. And that's the way evil seems unless the power that comes against it has enough authority to shut it down. Refusing to allow the battle with us as humans to continue. See, evil seems to be never ending and limitless unless the power that comes against it is the power that says it stops here. And that's what we're seeing going on in this text. Jesus is the one who has that authority and Jesus is the one who has that power. He cast out all the demons. He healed all the sick. This is no contest for Jesus dealing with illness and disease and demons is like shooting fish in a bucket. It's not a contest. It's not a competition. They can't resist at all. Jesus has complete authority and power. And Matthew is setting the stage for, for when we will learn that Jesus has this same authority and power over sin and death. That it's not a competition. For Jesus, it's, it's not a problem. They can't resist at all. Jesus has complete authority and power. Now, I said before that we'd have to look at these people. Some are just coming to be healed. They're really not interested in being disciples. Interesting, Jesus heals them anyway. They, these people, they didn't earn the healing. It wasn't like, well, that if Jesus would heal them, they'll be his disciples. You know, the, the, the old um, foxhole prayer. If you let me survive this, I will serve you forever. That's not even why they're coming. Some of them. We're not really told what their motives are, so we can't assume that they're all picture-perfect and wanting to be disciples and followers. And we are remiss to assume that none of them are interested in following Jesus as a disciple. But we at least learn that the people didn't earn this healing. They didn't deserve it. They weren't perfect. They weren't righteous people. Uh, we are shown that this is a gift of grace, uh, just like his salvation. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. These healings are a picture of Jesus' spiritual power. It was limitless love, authority, and power extended to all who would come. And then Matthew ends this text by telling us that this was part of the fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy written 700 years earlier. The Messiah, the Christ, would remove the sufferings of those who suffer. It's not only talk about him healing bodies and minds, but also souls. So that was the end of the presentation. Then I asked them what comments or questions that they had. The one who is the leader of the community there said he was impressed with the power of Jesus and its completeness. And we were meant to be impressed by that. That was Matthew's point. But the point is also that Jesus has that same power of completeness in our salvation to save us from sin and death. And then the other gentleman who was there uh, said that he, is, he can see how Matthew is writing in this text that Jesus is God. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't be able to heal someone so completely and so immediately.